Morning everyone, welcome to Marion's World and another episode of What I'm Stitching which this week is actually my new needle book and I have it here. I actually have finished it um, but I'm just going to see part one today because I filmed, I stitched for so long that I had to split the video into two. So you're going to get part one this Sunday and part two next week. But I'm inordinately pleased with it. And it's been inspired by two separate things. Firstly, my beach finds. I just couldn't wait to start you know, doing some stitching with the stones and the rocks and the whatever else I'd brought. So I did do a piece of work incorporating one of the smoothed pottery shards, uh, sort of as a practice for doing a big piece to hang on my wall somewhere but that got me going with that style of work and so I decided now or never just do your new needle book while the muse takes you and so that's what I did. The second thing that was inspiring me was watching K3 on on her channel and doing that slow stitching type of thing that I don't normally show on my channel, but I do do bits and pieces of it. So those two things have just come together at the right moment and I've actually finished uh, my new needle book. So I'm really pleased with it. It took me quite a long time um, and in the meantime I hope you enjoy it. I'm getting set to make myself a new needle book and this one has been going for a long time. 2011 when I made it and it's done sterling work but it's just not quite what I need now it's getting a little bit dirty the metal that I couched down onto the edges here has just started to wear away and I catch it all the time and although I could repair it it would mean taking all of it off I think and redoing it Although I did really enjoy making this stumpwork needle lace and but you can see it's just worn from just so much use. So although I still do love it, I need a new one. It's getting dirty. This is silk off an old blouse. It's worn through with use. And for some reason I never really liked the way it hinged. Although I did follow um, a book and this, and it is the way it was supposed to be. But I wished it had just hinged here instead and opened that way instead of diagonal. Because when I, when I use it, it sort of falls like that. And, I, and I've, never, I've never liked the way it does that. So at long last, I am going to make myself a new one. And I've thought long and hard about what it needs to do because it needs to do more than this one uh, as you can see this has just got flannel pages that I've um, uh, blanket stitched around so the inspiration for the new book is actually the beach finds that I that I did um, a couple of weeks ago I couldn't wait to start sewing with them and making something I want to do a big wall hanging so in preparation for the wall hanging well, I've actually been doing some other embroidery. So I've done this piece for a new stitch book. Um, I've been doing quite a few, but this one was the one that came from the beach finds. And so what I've done is I layered up some of the tough fabric that I've got from the beach and a piece of, it's actually a piece off that stick, which was just a smooth stick, but it was just lovely. And one of the smooth shards of pottery and just worked out a way that I could put the pottery on that secured it. So this was really a bit of a practice for what I wanted to do as a wall hanging. And because I still want to do some more with my beach finds, I thought this would be a nice way to make the front of my new needle book. Put them to one side. And so I thought, well, what does it need to do? It needs to have more than needles in for me now. So what I would like is I would like a place for the wax to go because I do wax the thread if I'm hand stitching clothes. And I've collected needles from everywhere around. So these are my sashiko needles, which usually just stay in this box until I'm using them. But really, 
I'd rather they were all together. So I don't want to put them through fabric. I want to be able to keep that as it is. So I'm going to need a pocket of some kind. And that's really going to determine the size of my book. So it's going to be bigger than that one. So I need those needles in. My wool needles for sewing up when I'm knitting. They're always just loose in the bottom of my work bag. I would like them to be in as well. And then I do have some vintage needle um, needle cases. And so these are really lovely and I would quite like to keep the needles in these. They don't all have to be in, but it would be nice. This is a particularly lovely one. Uh, it would be nice if these could be in a little pocket. Uh, and I still use pages to put needles in as well. I'd like to put the little magnifying glass in. This belonged to my mother-in-law. She used it when she was sewing. And I'd like my sashiko thimble in as well. And I'd like a space to put my scissors. So this little scissor case I made to match this. It's got a moth on the front in gold work. And my little bow and arrow on. And I put a chain on it so that when I'm sewing, I actually have this round my neck and my scissors are handy. But what happens is that it, it just ends up in the bottom of my work bag and then the chain gets caught round everything. So I thought it would be nice if I actually had a pocket that these could go in and the chain could go into so that it didn't all get um, t um, in a big mess. So actually, I'm expecting my needle book to do quite a lot of things. So the size has to be a minimum to get those in. So let's have a look. I'm going to measure that. Well, that's four and a half inches. So I think maybe I need to make my needle book six inches wide, six inches tall for width. That's just three, three and three quarters, that one. I think maybe by five, six by five. I wonder what this one is. This is my flower book. I actually go. I think I might actually do the closure the same as this because I do have some more of these hooks, and I thought that would be a nice closure possibly. What size is this? That's five. Well, that's five by six. So actually, I think that would be quite a nice size. So if I move all this away to the side, move my stick, move all these until I need them. Oh, and this is, so these are the pieces I'd like on the front, I think. I've got some nice pieces of beach pottery, little stone, the little washer, and I'm hoping that I can do something like I did on there and make a feature of putting them onto the front because that's flat I don't think it's going to catch on anything keep my scissors out I've still lost my other scissors so that's all going to move so for fabric I have pulled out all my lovely bits that I think might be useful um, this is a vintage nighty neckline and my solar dye stuff, more solar dye fabric, paint cloths, tea dye. These are all things I did last year. Um, rust dyed, some good markings on there. I thought maybe something off this leather glove would look nice on the front. You can see I've used it already for crafting. Or, if it's not on the front, I can use it to make tabs inside, so the leather gloves are probably going to get used. And I think that's it really. Oh, I've got my cup of tea and I've found my base fabric, which is just a ripped bit off an old stripy pillowcase. And I've made it, um, I'll just measure it. It's 13 by 8, 7.5 at the moment. And that just has to start somewhere, I think. I like the linen. I love this green. I think I'm going to... 
I don't want to just be hiding my bunny my bunny fabrics. I do love the green though. That might be quite nice to show the pieces up on, like this dark piece here, and it's got some rusty stuff on it as well. Definitely wanted to have the nighty on it. Maybe I don't want that bit there. This is going to be the front. Let me see, maybe that can be the back instead. I really like that bit there. It's got a bit of a purpley tinge to it. I don't mind the crease in it. I'll put that up there. It's got to be practical in the end because I'll be using this all the time. You notice I'm practicing my left handed scissors. Maybe that can go there. Okay, so I'm going to just practice where my fangs will go before I layer up the back. Maybe the lace is going. I do like that grey. Maybe I need a bigger piece and use it as the background. This is the background for the piece of ceramic. And that just looks like it needs something now. Maybe I'll have to wait until all the fabric is actually down, but I think I'm getting there, so I'm going to put them to one side. It's definitely going there. I do like that bit of Cornish wear, but maybe this is flatter. I really like this bit of nighty here. That's also another nighty. That's a neckline, but not so old as this one. Right, I think I just have to start. Otherwise, I'm just going to be endlessly, endlessly arranging. Okay, I'm going to pin and start. Because if I don't start, it's never going to get done. You need to um, overlap things enough. Otherwise, as you're stitching, it all comes apart. And there's no point if it all comes apart when you're stitching it. I was, going to, I was actually going to use some of my dyed blanket. And I've just realised... Never mind, I might use blanket for the inside actually. I'm pleased this little bit of weaving is getting on there. I can't bear to waste the... <laughs> I can't bear to waste it. There, now it's not getting wasted. I hope I've overlapped it enough though. Put a pin in. Excellent. Oh, I've ended up. I'm working on it for ages. I decided I wanted it a bit more colourful. Found some of my ink tensed lace, paint cloth, and this little scrap with a bit of a, a rose on and I am just going to shove it under there because I just felt as if I wanted more colour. I hope I haven't made it too busy. I think what I'll do next is I'm going to just tack things down a little bit. It's actually taken me a while to get my little design organised. I swapped out the bit of linen I had here for this blue linen and I've put a quite a big piece in there so it allows me to put something else on top or the piece of... So I'm not going too busy on the bottom where I want bits on. And I'm not actually sure about this double. It looks like a B at the moment which means absolutely nothing so I might have to put an extra one on or something else. I have actually tacked them down though. So we'll see. I'm going to start stitching. I've actually basted it in and I didn't go in lines or anything like that. I've just gone wherever I thought I needed it to hold it down. The only other things I swapped are I found that little bit of lace 
I've got the pen cloth, the pink bit, and it was this bit of linen, really. So I'm going to get on and start to sew. And I'm going to try just to use pieces out of my big tango, because this is what they're for, really. Just use up, or use up and make something with them. So I'm not sure. I'm not, I don't know whether I'll start with the pink. Um, I'll start with something a bit more nondescript, I think. There's a nice soft green. And I'm using one of my sashiko needles, except I'm not going to use my big thimble or anything. So where to start? That's the thing. And I do want to do some running stitch, but I want to do some embroidery stitches too. I want to start with some herringbone. And I'm going to herringbone this piece here. And I'm just going to do my little backward stitches. I don't need to uh, particularly be measuring anything. So herringbone this on. I'm really, I'm really pleased I've actually started to make this. And this has been in my head to make for about the last six months. I kept putting it off and putting it off because other things came in the way and took over. That's just what happens with me. I guess something gets in my head and then I have to do it there and then. And so you can see I'm just taking a little backward stitch and crossing over and I'm going to come right to the end of here. And I'm not particularly taking any bother about whether my stitches are even or not. I just like the look of them to be quite organic. Really pleased this is getting on. One part of it had a real orangey bit, um, but I, mustn't, I must have used all that bit up. So I might just do some adjusting on these fabrics as I go. Sometimes it takes me ages just to decide where everything is going to go. So I'll go down there. And at least that's the first piece of stitching done. Once I've got something in my needle, I just try and do it until it's finished. So I'm going to, I want to actually running stitch down it and get myself over onto that piece, I think. And this is almost this colour, so it'll work really well. But because it's thick, I'm going to do the little running stitch in two goes. Because this is quite a thick piece of, of weaving. I'm just going running stitch back along here, taking the movement in two gestures because of the thickness of this, this particular piece. I hope it's going to work out with my bits of beach finds on. So I did like it when I made the piece of the little piece of stitching, which was my practice for a wall hanging. I haven't done the wall hanging yet but I realised I had so much beach finds. I might as well I might as well use them for my needle book too. I'm going to cross stitch up here. And again I'll do it in two motions for the moment until I get onto thinner fabric. I've tried to keep my pieces away from the very edges because I know that'll be getting turned under. I feel already I'm working too near the edge. I've got a couple of strands of this pale green and I'm going to put some running stitch along here just to get things tacked down a bit more. I'll start I'm going to end I'm going to aim for going along that bit. Oh, it's a lovely colour. I think this might have to go into a part one and part two because I can't see me being able to get it all done in one session. It'll be too long. And plus I haven't actually quite worked out how I'm doing the inside. I sort of know I'll be doing wool or flannel pages. 
because I have so much wool. A few years ago, I woke up one day and I knew I had to stitch my stair carpet or make a stair carpet. And I was out and about in my van because I was still working as a gardener. And I went past this antique shop and standing outside the front of it was an old mat frame from doing hooky mats. And it was just like it was meant to be. And I stopped the van, went in to ask them about it. And the man said, do you know what it is? And I said, yes, I do. It's an old mat frame. And go, oh, this is a Victorian one. It's 100 years old. And he charged me £20 for this oak um, mat frame. And so I just paid the money and brought it home. And then I rung my mum because I have had memories. What had happened was I'd had a bit of a dream of my mum and my grandma doing the hooky mats on the big frames over the backs of the chairs, backs of the dining chairs when I was little. So I rang my mum and said, I'm going to make myself a, a carpet. Have you still got the rug hooks? And she was going, yes, I do, but I haven't got the frame anymore. I was going, where did the frame go? And she said, oh, that went years ago. Maybe got chopped up for firewood. Nobody was doing them. Nobody wanted them. I said, no, it doesn't matter. I've got a mat frame. I'm going to come over tonight and you can show me how to do it. And so she did. And got an old wool blanket, cut it up, and I started doing a practice straight away. And I practiced till I got my hook, my a rug hooking even and then for the next few weeks all I did was trawl the char charity shops looking for old blankets that I could dye to get the colours um, old um, second, ha well, second hand 100% wool jumpers particularly men's ones because there was a lot of a lot of um, jumper for your money and just collected them up all the time. I had a lady at Barnard Castle at one of the charity shops who actively uh, kept them for me. She was going, oh, if, what if they're moth-eaten? I said, it doesn't matter, I'm cutting them up. And she used to ring me and say, I've got another bag full. And I would go down and um, she'd have like a, a black bag half full of merino jumpers or uh, Edinburgh woolen mill jumpers, things like that. And she'd say, five pounds? And I'd go, are you sure that's all you want? Yes, five pounds. She says, that's, that's more than the rag man gives us. And so I was absolutely over the moon and I would just put them through the washer and felt them and then use them to cut up into strips. So I used to ask everybody, do you have any blankets you don't want anymore? Do you want rid of them? And as soon as I said I was going to be cutting them up for, the carpet, for a carpet, I think people thought I was a bit mad. But in the end, I must have about, I must have about 40 wool blankets. Or some of the best ones I got. I was working for a, a lady in a really big house. And I asked her whether she had anything. She was going, oh, yes, I'll sort some out for you, Marion. And the next time I went, she brought out a pile of about six wool blankets that were very thin, but obviously very, very old indeed. And she was going, no, I'm pleased to get rid of them. There's no, we just don't want to use them anymore. So I came home with them. When I opened them out, I just couldn't believe it. They were so beautiful. And a lot of them had been mended with these very decorative darning bits. I have to get them out to have a look because I, I just put them away because I could not bear to cut them up. I suppose there's no need for me to have them. And the other thing is they were huge. They were not double size or even king size these were huge blankets and they are beauties and I haven't looked at them they're in one of my um, blanket chests because I wouldn't cut them up in the end 
think it was 2017 that I did my carpet and nobody wanted blankets. The charity shops didn't even have them on display. I used to ask them for them and they'd say, oh, you're looking for a dog blanket? And I'd go, no, but do you have dog blankets? And they'd say, yeah, you can have dog blankets. And they'd bring out these beautiful wool blankets. And I've gone, are you selling that for a dog blanket? Shall we just give them away? And so I used to get them for nothing. Or they'd say, oh, you can have them for 50 pence or a pound. And I used to come home thinking I'd won the lottery nearly because I had these wool blankets. I just ended up cutting them into metre squares and dyeing them so that I could get colours for my carpet that I couldn't get any other way. I maybe have to do some rug hooking. Maybe you'd like to see some. I could do some, uh, I'd do a project maybe. I think what I'll do, this is a bit harder to get through because this is a paint rag. It's not the fact that I've coloured it on purpose, it's where I've washed my brushes out onto. And the paint, the, it's a little bit stiff, but it's still sewable. I'm going to finish that bit off and I'll do a bit more of the straight stitches and I'll come back when I'm doing something more decorative. Well, I've got quite a bit done, but I feel as if I want to try and get my pieces of uh, pottery and the washer on. But this is coming along really nicely. I've got the herringbone, got some running stitch, some nice cross stitches in. I did blanket stitch in pink right round the edge of there. And I've done pink French knots. And pink might have been a bit of an odd choice, but it kept coming into my hand. It just seemed as if it wanted to be chosen. So it's got pink French knots and pink blanket stitch. I wanted to be able to put these on and I've had them every which way. I really wanted to have this bit of Cornish wear on but it just doesn't seem to go to me. So it might be getting put to the side. But this little piece, look at that, it's got horses legs on. hope you can see that, I hope it's in focus. There's two little galloping legs coming out from that. So goodness knows what it's been off. So I feel as if it fits there really nicely among that lovely marking. So that's definitely where that's going to go. I feel this one wants to go in there in that little corner because it's a little right angled bit. And it just has little, I think it's little flowers. And the washer, which I really would like on because it's so smooth. The washer's got pushed off there because of the horse's legs. And I feel as if it can go here. So the first one I'm actually going to put on is this one. I've still got my same sashiko needle, but I've changed to this um, single strand soft cotton. Oh, a bit of silver's just appeared. Well, now you know, maybe that's there for a reason. So I'm going to put this on. And I'm going to put it on so it's nice and secure. I'm going to hold it there, come up right alongside it. And I'm going to just start taking the thread across all of the corners. And I'm not particularly going to try and make a pattern. I'll just keep coming back and crossing over again and coming back and crossing over to wherever I think the thread will stay without being slipping off I think it's just done there because I didn't hold it do I hold it while I'm putting the thread on come back Going to pull this one right across there's no point going there it's going to slip off the corner I'll come right the way across and back back again and i think this one had better go across there 
I'm going to go around again, putting my stitches in slightly different places. until I've got a decent amount of stitches in but this is where I'll start and get it really nice but I think I need a longer thread than that so I'll just I'll just tie this thread off now I've got another thread I'm just going to come up in the back um, just anywhere really anywhere I can start off I'll go there and then I'm going to blanket stitch around and I'm going to pull the opening as I go and I'm just going to start catching all of the threads that I think I should catch so not necessarily every single one but on, on that bit there I can catch these two here and I'll start my blanket stitch off and I'll just pull it and another one and I'm just going to go around keeping my fingers holding this blanket stitch in and taking a hold of all these cross threads as I go and all of a sudden the blanket stitch will tighten up all of those crossing threads and I don't want to get all of them in the same way so sometimes I'll miss one of the threads out I definitely want to be able to see those horse legs if I can. And I'm just going to go around the around the outside edge pulling the blanket stitch in. And then this little shard of pottery is definitely not going to fall out at all. Just need to turn it round so I can work on it. <clears throat> I'll hold it up a bit so you can see what I'm doing. So I've got one, two, three, four pieces of I'm not going to I'm going to miss those two out and just go on these two. Do a few blanket stitches. Actually I want to open that up so I'd rather it was down here somewhere. So I'm going to skip right along to this bit. I'm going to, that little piece there could well fall off the edge. So I definitely need to catch that bit in and I'm going to go straight up under all of them. And that'll tighten and open up the hole. And this is just ordinary blanket stitch. It's nothing... No, no special stitch. I'm just going to keep pulling it that way so I can open things up. Actually, I want that to be down there. So if I keep going along, I'm going to cover the leg up and I would like it to be open. So I'm actually going to go behind first to keep the blanket stitch on the same way. I'm just going to pull it down there. Put an extra thread in and pull that in and then come back up and start again and go back under there and in that way you can <clears throat> you can open the hole to where is best for your piece that you're trying to apply And each stitch you put in, you can feel the whole thing being tighter and tighter as you're sort of making the stitches tighten up on each other. And then I'm back round to the beginning. I'm just going to get through that other blanket stitch, come out at the bottom. Just going to manipulate that and open it up till I can see those horse legs. There they are. And weave back down and finish off. And that's the first of my pottery shards. Absolutely tightly stitched on. 
Oh, it's come out really well. I like the blue on the grey. So I'm going to do this little tiny shard next. Definitely want it to be in that little right angled corner. And come up so I can go keep going across the corners of things. But you definitely want your thread to be sort of going slightly underneath rather than out. So sort of angle your, angle your needle inwards. That'll all help when tightening threads up. And I usually make just a backward stitch, backwards little stitch. And then find out where the next thread needs to go. There's no point going off somewhere, it needs to go right across. And you can go right across the middle, it doesn't matter. There'll be enough slack in what you're doing to be able to do the, blan the blanket stitch around. I, I like the I like the web that all of the different stitches make, the randomness of it. So I'm just going to keep going across. And you'll find that you can just open that hole. Oh, I think they're working well. And so the last thing is the washer. And I think I'm going to use the same. I'd like the like the consistency of using the same thread to apply the three items. I'm going to put it there and I'm going to just overcast. I'm going to do it a few times. Try and lay the stitches really nicely. Do you feel how smooth it is? It's amazing what the sea does to metal and to stones. Oh no, do you know what? I hope it doesn't look like a life belt. I don't want it to. So what can I do? I feel as if there's something I need to do. Oh no, I think this is working. It's going to look like a spider's web, I think. Sometimes you just have to stitch something. It doesn't... Sometimes you don't even know what's going on. I'm just going to stitch in there. Until I'm happy with it. Just made a spider's web thing in the middle. And I think I'm going to leave that for part one. I think I quite like it. I've got my front cover, my, my cover, almost done. I've got to get all of this stitched down properly and then work out my pages and my pockets. It's on, it's started. I feel a needle book's nearly going to be there for me. I'm really pleased with the little horse's legs on that little piece there. It's so nice. Anyway, I'll stitch the rest of this down and do some embroidery. And come back next time with finishing it off, hopefully. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. I loved how the cover came together in the end and what's so nice about holding this in my hands is that I can feel those lovely smooth beach pebbles actually they're not pebbles they're beach pottery um, the little the little piece that has the horse's legs on it it's just it's just so cute and the lovely bit of Cornish ware on there keeping my hand over there because I did I came up with a closure that I'm really excited about it, but I want you to see it next week. Um, so the bit of Cornish ware looks lovely, and the horse's legs looks lovely, and that lovely bit of uh, stacked running stitch, I'll show you there, that lovely bit of stacked running stitch, it just came out so beautifully, and I thought it was a good method to do it, for me anyway. So I struggled to get the uh, lines close enough together 
in the first go and so I did them quite wide and then kept filling in narrower and narrower with slightly different colours and it's one of my favourite bits um, other than the other than all the beach finds being on though so anyway thank you very much for watching and liking or subscribing and watching videos thank you very much and um, keep it coming really <laughs> thank you and I will see you on Wednesday with the Stitch Channel and it's leaves. I'm really excited to be starting leaves, although I couldn't be happier with my bracket fungus either. Um, thanks for watching everyone. Bye from Marion's World.